Hello students. So today we're going to be talking about plate tectonics. This is from chapter 3, lesson 3 in the book, and the learning target is I can summarize plate tectonics and describe the motions at the three plate boundaries. As usual, make sure that you're lining up your page, one across the top margin, and then one about that inch and a half from the side so we can do our questions. Once you've got that at the top, we can move on. Uh, so plate tectonics, this picture does a nice job of kind of just explaining the whole thing. Uh, we're going to get a little bit deeper into this and talk about the why and the how and uh, the landforms that they make in motion. So, the basic definition, your description of what plate tectonics is. The Earth's lith lithosphere is broken into slabs of rock called plates. Uh, all that lithosphere, especially we're talking specifically the crust, is made up of um, hard, brittle pieces of rock and we call those plates or tectonic plates. Uh, these plates move and their interactions with each other create volcanoes, earthquakes, and different landforms uh, like volcanoes and other things, and we'll get to those specifically. But this is what plate tectonics is. Okay? Now, what's the cause? What did Wegener not have to be able to explain this? How did we get from an idea of continental drift, the drifting continents, to a full theory of plate tectonics? Uh, we needed that cause, that mechanism. And we have the mechanism, now we understand what causes plates to move. Uh, tectonic plates move because of convection currents in the mantle. Uh, please notice that I've underlined, that I've underlined convection currents. You've got that right there. I'd, I'd ask you guys to also underline or draw attention, maybe highlighting it, because convection currents, we've talked about convection currents in a boiling pot of water, we've talked about convection currents with air rising, but we haven't really talked about convection currents within rock, because the mantle is solid, right? It's solid rock, but something about the mantle makes it so that it can flow in a convection current because it only works with fluids. And so what is that? Let's go step by step, and I'll play a little video in the background. Um, heat, from, uh, heat from the core softens the rock in the mantle. It's solid, but it's very soft, kind of like putty or clay. Uh, number two, the hotter rock becomes less dense and it rises. Things that are less dense in a fluid, they rise up. So this melted or very softened material at the bottom of the mantle next to the, the core, it's going to get very soft and start rising up and start uh, slowly, very, very slowly rising up. We're not talking about in uh, like we've seen in class or in a boiling pot of water like the one in the picture at the top, but it starts to rise up in the center where it's getting heated and then start to um, rise because it's less dense. Number three, once the rising rock reaches the colder, more brittle lithosphere, the rock spreads out and pulls the plates with it. So you can see up in this picture or this uh, animation or this, sorry, this video right in the top, you can see these potatoes rising and pulling to the side and they're sinking back down to the bottom of the pan and rising back up in the center and slowly pushing back to the edge of the pan. And this is exactly what happens with those plates. Number four, the spreading plates will be colliding with another plate. And when they collide, the one that's more dense will sink. And so it goes to the edge, just like in this video. It was rising, it was going up, and you've got that thing and it goes down to the side. And this is just like um, convection in a pan in the earth. So let's check that out. The analogy, like I said, that we always use. Boiling water in a pan, it rises up, it goes on the cross the top and it sinks because it cools down, it sinks because it's a little bit more dense, goes across the bottom, gets heated up again, rises up again, moves across the cooler top, gives off some heat, cools down, sinks back down. The exact same thing happens with the core of the earth. The heat, it's heated at the bottom. All that heat, uh, heated material, the softer mantle rises up. You've got a mid-ocean ridge right here. It rises up and once it hits the surface, that cooler, more brittle rock, it starts to spread out. And so you've always seen me doing these motions, my little convection current dance. You've got this, it rises, it cools at the top and it's pushing outward and it starts to sink down. Now, once this starts sinking down, this is the more dense crust right here, over here as well. This is the more dense crust. It's more dense, so it's heavier, and it's actually being pulled by gravity. And so it, eventually, at this point, you start it off by the, the land splitting, but now that it's being pulled down and there's this heavier stuff being pulled, more of the motion of the plates is actually dragging it, and they call that slab pull. Now, three different types of plate boundaries. Your plate boundaries, you've got three different types. Uh, we're going to talk about each of them, so uh, you don't need to, as usual, you know, you don't need to write that down right now because we'll get to them. Just make sure that you are writing this down as a header and you'll have some bullet points 
underneath it, all three of them just like that. Okay? Now, first type of plate boundary, you've got divergent boundary. Okay? A divergent boundary, uh, I've got a little video playing in the background, it's where plates move apart or split. Okay? They're moving apart, they're diverging. So you can see in this little animation, or sorry, the picture in the background, this is from an app called Dynamic Plates, and the plates are moving apart, they're being pulled apart, and what do they create? The landforms that they create. Mid-ocean ridges, rift valleys, volcanoes, and earthquakes. Uh, some other things kind of come up, but these are the big ones. The mid-ocean ridges, if it's in the middle of a, an ocean or underground eventually, and a rift valley, if it is. And so in this animation, in this animation right here, you can see these volcanoes are forming around, um, these are just kind of erupting right in the middle. This is a lava fissure like they have in Iceland. And right now, it's splitting as a rift valley, but it's going to fill in with water eventually and become an ocean or a sea. So the Atlantic Ocean is a great example of what happened here. This would be Africa, and this would be South America. So I've got down here the where, Mid-Atlantic Ridge, Iceland, Africa. Get those examples down because we'll, we'll talk about those specifically. Next, convergent boundary. And there are a couple different kinds of convergent boundaries, but we'll use this classic one where plates move uh, together or collide. So they're converging, they're coming together. Um, what do they create? They can create trenches. Um, if there's an oceanic crust that's more dense, they'll create a trench, just like you can see in this animation, that trench right here, it goes along that line and that whole plate is sinking deep down, it's being dragged and pulled down by gravity, La melting of magma and material. And then right here, mountain ranges, volcanoes, the worst earthquakes are caused by these types of boundaries, and then uh, tsunamis, if it's in an ocean area, it can cause that. Now, where do we find these? Uh, some examples of where would be the Japan Trench around Japan. That's why they get a lot of earthquakes. Uh, the Himalayas, that's why how India has created, um, India has created the Himalayas as they've uh, pushed into Asia. They've created those large mountain ranges by a convergent boundary. And then Alaska. Alaska's got a lot of earthquakes, and those long, that long um, island chain coming out from it, that's caused by... Um, subduction and then these plates creating volcanoes when they melt, okay? And a transform boundary. Transform boundaries are basically just where plates slide past each other. So they move each other sideways. You can kind of see this going on in here. You've got pressure moving this way and then this side goes this way. And so they're pulling apart. They're kind of snapping that way. And then they once they finally release the pressure and snap, it releases energy in the form of an earthquake, and you can see right up here, massive waving and damage because of that shaking. Uh, what do they create? Not so many landforms, but faults or earthquakes. Um, where do they happen? The San Andreas Fault is the classic example. Uh, the San Andreas Fault has all sorts of, um, has that big valley that you can actually see. You can go and take pictures of it, and it's very obvious. So you can observe that very clearly. Uh, you have a lot of these around other plate boundaries. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that in underwater and uh, in, a, in a moment here. So, tra uh, divergent and transform at, the same, transform at the same time. Right here in the middle, you've got divergent boundaries because they're pulling apart right there. And over here, you've got another divergent boundary pushing that way and pushing that way. So they're, they're pulling apart. But right in the middle here, you can see that transform boundary because if you notice, this part right here is going this way and this part right here is going this way. And so you've got both ones going the same uh, opposite directions at that point. So you've got two different types of plate boundaries because they're separating each other. The crust is moving in different directions. And what about all three? The Juan de Fuca plate, um, right off the coast of Washington, Oregon, and California, Northern California, this has all three types in a very small area. And so what you've got, you notice I've got some color coding going on here. I've got red for the convergent. I've got... Um, yellow for the divergent, and I've got blue for the transform. So let's draw these off. Divergent boundaries right here. You've got some divergent boundary, and over here you've got another divergent boundary. Notice the uh, Juan de Fuca ridge, and at that boundary you've got motion moving that way, motion moving that way. And then what about over here? You've got your convergent boundary. This is what causes Mount St. Helens um, or the other volcanoes. You can see those listed kind of over here. They're little triangles. These are your volcanoes. And this is the convergent boundary. This is a trench, a subduction zone where the plate is going under another one. And so you can see that this right here, this is going to be our subduction zone. This is our convergent boundary. And this plate is moving from this ridge all the way under here. 
And what about the transform boundary? Right here you can see this area because if you look at this, and you, sorry, I forgot to point this one out, at this ridge it's moving this way and pushing in that way. And so what you've got, and I'll do this in blue, this ridge is pointing, is pushing that way from the Juan de Fuca ridge, and over here it's going in this direction. And so that transform boundary is moving. You've got all three types happening at the exact same time. And if you're wondering about which things to focus on, think about the motions of these boundaries that I just demonstrated. Think about what plate tectonics is in general, and how do all of these combine on a global scale, okay?